Hey, welcome back to the channel. So I told you guys that I was going to be working on a YouTube setup and uh, spoiler, spoiler alert, <laughs> we're not quite there yet. I'm definitely filming in the car, but I told myself I would film another video this week and no excuses, but with a busy schedule and a baby at home, um, we haven't really found that space yet. So I hope that this is all right. I think it is better perfect, no, better done than perfect. I'm embracing that mentality. And I wanna share with you guys today five things that drew me to chiropractic. Um, why did I want to become a chiropractor? If you are a prospective student or you're looking for a service-minded um, profession, if you have thought about the healthcare route and you don't really know where you fit in or what it is exactly to go after, um, I'm hoping that this video will shed some light as to what that decision-making process was like for me and why I'm so geared up and excited and hyped to be a chiropractor. And on that note, before we hop into those things, I, I got to share with you guys, um, I'm officially almost one week as a doctor of chiropractic. I graduated last week and it feels so good to have reached that finish line, a major milestone in what has been a very long journey, a very rewarding journey. And you know what? I'm just getting started. So very excited for that. Um, good times. And I told myself I should like have my diploma and show it or at least like the tassel from my my cap. So you guys know I'm being legit that it really did happen. But you know what? I don't have any of those things. So you're just going to have to take my word for it. All right. So anyway, let's hop into it. Like I said, if you're looking for um, a profession within the healthcare community, then you're going to have a lot of questions to ask yourself because a lot of those things might be very narrowing. There's going to be things that are very specific that you have an overarching idea of what you want to do. But as soon as you start going down one tunnel, tunnel and you commit to an education system, there's going to be a lot of things to consider. And so for me, it was very similar. Um, I was a pre, basically a pre-med route throughout the Naval Academy is where I went to my undergrad. Um, and I had a, a chemistry heavy curriculum. I, I received a chemistry major. And um, due to the needs of the Navy at, at the time, I wasn't able to go to medical school right out of the Naval Academy, but I did go into the Marine Corps. And when I was finished with my service there, I still thought, you know, Sarah, pre-med, I want to be a doctor. That's just what I told myself. So I got into an osteopathic medical school and it's there that I really started to ask myself the hard questions. Like, do you want to be a doctor because you think you want to be a doctor? Do you want the status? Is it because that's what you feel you need to do? Or what is the real motivation there? Um, and it was kind of uh, unearthing, <laughs> ungrounding or what it was just just it was a jumbled feeling for me because I didn't really know. I had to sit and ask myself, like, what is life? taught you so far? What have you been through? What can you gain from this experience that you've had? Um, and how can you decide what's best for you now? And I knew, I knew quickly into medical school that I wasn't really there for maybe the right reasons. I knew I wanted to be a doctor, but I didn't want to be a DOMD doctor for a bunch of reasons that we can talk about later. But it is there that I found osteopathic manipulative medicine and not a lot of DOs, osteopathic doctors practice, practice that art, that um, the manual, the manual adjusting, we'll call it adjusting because that's how I know it in Cairo speak. But I was drawn to it. I thought it was amazing. I saw so much potential for helping people. I love to use my body, my hands. I'm very kinesthetic um, and I loved communicating healthcare with this underlying idea that fixing something or restoring something, probably motion for the most part with OMM, but that that could restore balance and vitality in someone. And I didn't realize at the time that what I thought <laughs> was very much in line with chiropractic philosophy. There was a whole lot more that I could learn, but that was my first taste of chiropractic essentially because when I knew I was going to withdraw from medical school and I was looking for what it was that I was actually searching for, that's how I found chiropractic. And um, I started to shadow some chiros and get some experience. And I felt strongly within myself that that was a path I wanted to go down. And along the years, I think is where I started to gain more insight into why it was a good fit for me. But 
the point of what I'm sharing with you now is that I was really looking for something heavily science background. I wanted to learn about the human body, human anatomy, neuroscience, how we work, how to heal, all these things. But I also wanted to combine it with something a little bit more holistic, um, what we would call the art and the philosophy of chiropractic. And I think it's a very beautiful thing. Um, Western modern medicine, there's, this is not a knock on Western medicine whatsoever, but it wasn't a good fit for me for a few reasons. And I really wanted the ability, the opportunity to be able to dive deeper into healing and following the root symptoms, the root causes, and to restore balance in a way that would then allow the person to take control of their health and have an active, an advocate along their health, their health journey. And, um, you know, I really Every vision I had of myself as a doctor pigeonholed me into sitting for a prescribed amount of appointment, appointment time that was dictated by um, a higher medical industry, be it a hospital or a medical practice, and then um, also having a quota to meet in regards to how many prescriptions were filled or vaccines were given. Um, and I'm not saying every doctor does that, and there's certainly different specialties and whatnot, but... I wanted to work with families and I wanted to be a family care doctor and under the model of uh, what we would call modern medicine, I didn't see my place there. So the art and the science of chiropractic is what I find very beautiful. Um, I think that they, they are so beautifully paralleled in the academic program and you can, you can check out different programs and they're all going to be a little different. So I, I encourage you to do that for yourself. Spend some time at each college, at each chiropractic program and see what it is. Are they heavily philosophy based, science based, evidence based? They're all going to claim something, but you have to ask yourself what, where do you see yourself falling into the scheme of chiropractic, the, the, the big picture of chiropractic and what speaks to you most? And for me, I think I, um, I found a balance of that in my education and then if I sought something deeper or something more scientific or whatever there's lots of avenues that you can go down to get continuing education or meet with other mentors and chiropractors to gain a little bit from their experience um, so that's a long-winded answer I hope that it makes sense um, but the fact that there was something more there in terms of art and philosophy and understanding um, our innate ability to heal was very beautiful to me. Uh, yeah. So, um, the second thing I want to talk about is that I touched on it a second ago, but I am very kinesthetic. I've been an athlete. I'm active. I love moving. Moving is my comfort zone. <laughs> I'm not, I'm not saying I'm ADHD, but I might be. Um, no, I'm just kidding. But I'm just, I, I love to figure how, figure out how to use my body to do things that are awesome. Um, I was a bodybuilder, a triathlete. Um, I, I love being in movement, in motion, um, and challenging myself. So that really played into the fact when I was learning a new skill with my body, that was very rewarding. When I started to master side posture or thinking about how I used to start to do thoracic adjustments and think I'm this big, strong, powerful woman. And for some reason, my my thoracic adjusting is so weak. Like, where does the force go? What is happening? And to see myself improve over the weeks of training, it was so rewarding, um, you know, and, and gain that confidence in a new skill. Like, that was that was very, very cool to me. Um, which leads to my, my next point is that I did not know that I was going to find so much benefit and joy um, in using human touch as a modality of healing and connection and shared experience. It's, it's really been powerful for me um, to be able to relax and connect with someone with my hands and get so much information in, in, in such little time really in the grand scheme of their life. Um, but it's, it's something I can't totally explain, but it's with trained hands and an open heart, there's so much that you can receive and give through touch. And, um, that is very unique to the chiropractic profession. Okay. So I think we're on number, it might be two or th two. I believe it's two. So number three is just going to stem off that a little bit and it's just movement. Um, 
the premises of chiropractic, so if we're talking about a subluxation, whether it be a bone out of place or um, other dysfunction, organ system dysfunction, impingement on the nervous system or the nerves of the nervous system, which then lead to other symptoms and, and negative experiences of the body, um, we want to move, remove, and facilitate movement at that area. So that's an area of, of stagnation that we are creating movement. So there is that component, and also the component that we are constantly, if if we're we're going about it in the right manner, we're trying to create and inspire humans to keep moving. There's not a lot of other professions besides, of course personal training, um, physical therapy, which is also a little, it's a little different because we're dealing with um, mostly acute injury and restoring function, which that is very good. But in, in the light of chiropractic, we want to get there and reach a person before they're even injured and before they can't move. And there's tons of degeneration and um, issues that stem from that. And we want to continue to motivate them to have movement lifestyle. Like that is the way that we operate. We, we are encouraging that kind of lifestyle and having the opportunity to share that and be a model, be um, an advocate for movement in someone's life without having to be um, a specialist in, let's say, like, I don't know what I'm trying to say. is just in general, like, I love that. <laughs> um, I love that you, you already have this idea of a chiropractor. Um, and you already know that when you go to the chiropractor, they're going to ask you about these things and they're going to, um, they're going to guide you down a path that is not going to end you end up with you sitting in a chair and doing nothing. <laughs> um, they're going to ask you how you're moving, how you're feeling. They're going to restore motion to areas and spinal segments that are not moving and you're going to feel a lot better. Um, and you're going to live a much more active life. So I do love that about chiropractic. The next thing I'm going to say is that I really am a fan of being open to being different. Um, let's see, did I word that right? Yes, like I'm okay with being different and I actually enjoy it. Um, I'm not someone who, I guess you could say I'm a little bit of a rebel. I'm not someone who really likes to be put in a lot of boxes and have a lot of rules. And, um, you know, like if, if there's a line, I kind of want to cross it. If there's, let's say, even as a kid, if there's something you're trying to color and I kind of want to color outside of it. And I think that that's a really interesting thing about the chiropractic profession. While we do have a lot of merit um, and credibility and people that value us, there's certainly a lot of naysayers and there's certainly a lot of skeptics still. Um, and we're different. We, we see healthcare in a, in a different, through a different lens and we address dysfunction and disease and stagnation in a different way. And I enjoy that. That was actually something that was very appealing to me. Um, I'm okay being different and I actually welcome the challenge. And then I think that's four. So the last and fifth thing that I really think is cool about being a chiropractor is you'll hear this all through school and you'll probably know this going into school is that most people are probably going to encourage you to be a small business owner, to have your own practice. And while to a lot of people that hop into the healthcare profession and want to be a doctor, they like that stability. They want to be a part of a hospital or medical group. Um, or, you know, there's a lot of jobs in the healthcare profession that offer a lot of stability and certainty and you're going to be a part of the big system. And for some people that's super appealing for me, um, the stability part, sure, because I want to take care of my family. I want to take care of myself, but the, the, the narrow scope of that, the, basically what I was just talking about, the fitting inside of a bunch of rules and, and, you know, never really seeing the opportunity for, to be an entrepreneur, to run your own business, to learn from your mistakes and constantly be developing this working thing that is your practice. Um, that's not something I wanted to do. I wanted to have that opportunity. Granted, um, right out of school, I probably, well, I will be in an associate position, but I intend to learn a lot about that in order to someday open my own practice. I want to have my own practice members and a family there that I'm helping and serving that um, they know walking into my practice what it what it is, that it's something that I built for them 
with my own two hands, uh, both in service and in structure. Um, and well, I, I won't be building a practice like from like bricks and actual wood and stuff, but I'm, I'm, it's going to come from up here and it's going to come out there. So I'm building it in a sense. Um, but that's exciting to me, like that potential to know that it's going to take a lot of work and it's going to be very unique. And, um, yeah, that it's in the future for me. That's exciting. So if any of that, if any of that is appealing to you, um, you might want to look into it deeper. I hope that this was at all, this was somewhat interesting to you if you've been considering the profession. And if you have any questions, as always, you can drop them in a comment. You can find me on Instagram. Um, and I'm, you know, this is, let's be honest, this is, this is a project in the making. I don't have a million DMs or comments or something to reply. So now's a good time to get me. Um, inspire me, chat with me, ask me your questions, and I'll be sure to answer. And um, yeah, if you if you want to hear more content like this, then you know what to do. If, you, if you've been on YouTube once, <laughs> you know what to do. You can subscribe. And um, I look forward to seeing you next time. Like I said earlier, I'm going to be trying to shoot one video a week and vary the content. Um, but for now, I just want to share a little bit more about my background. So that's what you're getting today. And I look forward to interacting with you. Thank you again for stopping by. I appreciate your attention. Have a good day.